the field of carbon removal is taking flight. Uh, there's just so much more happening. There's so many more decisions being made. There's so many more investments, big things happening. And I thought it was a really important time because I see there's such a need for more leaders in the space. Obviously, there's, there's some great people being leaders in this space, but we need more. And I want to give some thoughts on, on how to do that. Uh, and so most of it comes back to this quote from a favorite computer visionary of mine named Alan Kay. Uh, and his quote is, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. Uh, and for me, that really comes back to what I see as the, the leadership opportunity in carbon removal. It's to continue to invent the future, to build the future. And, you know, that's something that ties back to how I originally got interested in the climate. So back in 2016, I was watching the Oscars. Leonardo DiCaprio got up on stage. He had just won an award. And what he said was, climate change is real. And in retrospect, I see that moment as, as like one of those mo moments in the movies where suddenly you see like all these, all these images come to mind as like the character just has this total transformation. And so for me, what was going through my mind as Leonardo said, climate change is real, were just these flashbacks to seeing, you know, flashes of an inconvenient truth, flashes of stuff on CNN, charts about carbon dioxide rising, uh, and just kind of realizing that I had, I had interpreted the, the debate and the discussion that was happening in the climate world as action on climate solutions. And I had, basically, I had, I had gotten it wrong because Leonardo was out there, he was saying, actually, like, the most important thing I can say is this is real. And it was just kind of that, that turning point where I, I, I looked on that debate as very important. I think that the, the early stage of, of the climate world where it was about, you know, is climate change real or not in the 90s and, and early 2000s, that period served a purpose, which was to say, yes, this is happening. Um, but at that moment when Leo was up on stage, it just, it looked to me like, well, you know, this debate has sort of, sort of served its purpose and it's kind of a bit stale at this point. And I, th I think that what, what I can help with are helping create solutions for the change in climate. Uh, and so really that, that moment in that, uh, in, in the Oscars was, a, was a transformational one for me. And it very much goes back to when I think of how to be a leader in carbon removal or in climate solutions, I think about how to invent the future. As a comparison to that, I, I open up Twitter sometimes and I just see all these comments about, um, so take, for example, the, the X Prize announcement, which is like the biggest thing to happen in carbon removal probably for the last five or so years. Like that's really, really big news. And I see, you know, comments on, on Twitter, they're like, hey, has anybody told Elon about trees? that kind of debate isn't really helping move things forward. If you're like, hey, Elon, I've got this new thing with trees and I want to help make it happen, like that's totally different. But just sort of introducing this, keeping a debate as something that hits pause is something that, that I've seen in the, in the climate world as a, as a risk. And I think that's when I, when I look back at Leo saying climate change is real, to me, I, I kind of look at some of the later stages of that debate that honestly still continues to this day, I look at that and I, I wonder, you know, who is that serving by, by getting stuck at this fork in the road and saying, well, it's real or it's not, or, you know, ca carbon removal is too expensive or it won't scale or, you know, it should be natural or technological, whatever the heck those two words mean really. And just seeing, you know, that debate is, it can be kind of a trap. And so, I go back to, to what Alan Kay said, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. So what does invent mean for carbon removal? What does it mean to build things? Does that mean that there's only space for engineers and scientists? No, I think that invention, inventing the future of carbon removal can mean everything from painting a picture of what that future looks like to writing a great song to building a a device or studying some sort of system that's in existence already and figuring out how can we improve it or bring new awareness to it uh, for carbon removal. That's, that's in the realm of, of 
everything to do with, with invention. But I think it's important not to get stuck in something that might sound like a debate, something that's like, well, is it this or is it that? I think often the, the best way to invent that future is to say, well, if it's this, here's the painting. Or if it's that, here's the song that comes out of it. But I think getting stuck on which way to go, there's going to be the people who arise as leaders in the space are going to be the ones that, that go for it. They're going to make a shot at uh, getting a job or going back to school or painting that picture or writing that song, uh, building out a spreadsheet, building out some sort of device, studying a system that already exists. They're going to, they're going to take that step. So if you find yourself stuck on whether carbon removal is too expensive or not, or it is too technological or too natural or not, whatever those words mean, you can take a step back and just acknowledge that sometimes the debate can be a distraction. The debate can be kind of a trap. And if you look back on the history of the climate world, it's kind of vulnerable to these debate traps, like whether climate change is real or not, is something that if that debate continues, the longer that debate continues, think about who's really benefiting from, from that debate continuing. Who's really benefiting from you sitting at the fork in the road rather than making a move and, and creating something? Sometimes it's because you actually do you need to weigh and consider something. You need to make, you know, make an analysis and figure out what to do. But other times, uh, and, and again, when I think about the broad climate world, the broad Twitter sphere, debates can be kind of a trap. So I love that Alan Kay quote that I put at the beginning of the video. And I wanted to give another quote uh, that my friend, The Determined, suggested. It kind of comes at it from a different angle, but it, it really gets at the same thing. And the quote is from James Murphy. The best way to complain is to make things. And I think, again, that, that similar to the best way to predict the future is to invent it. The best way to complain is to make things. I really like that. So those are my thoughts on how to be a leader in carbon removal and where, where leadership is needed. We need more inventors. Inventors meaning people creating songs, music, spreadsheets, solutions, creating teams, creating ideas, all that sort of stuff. We need more of that. So if you're trying to invent something and you need help, maybe you're starting a company or you're looking to meet teammates, uh, I would love to hear from you and hit me up.